Corn mazes were some of the most fun things to do as a kid. I just remember looking up and seeing these walls of corn all around and searching around with my friends trying to find the way out. Starting early in the growing season, farmers often get in their tractors and roll out a plot of land so the corn stalks can grow naturally in what in a few months will be a really fun maze. AJ, good job. Nico, sorry to me. <laughs> Around this time of year, everything goes pumpkin spice. It can be lattes, it can be cereals, it can even be cookies. As soon as the fall, uh, fall leaves start to hit and the, the weather starts to change, pumpkin pie comes out. It's acceptable to eat pumpkin pie for literally every dessert meal if you possibly can. And my favorite part of the pumpkin pie, the whipped cream. Well, that last one was definitely more of a fall than an autumn. Good evening, everyone. Let's see who is here. We saw Rob earlier for sure. And Sonia's here. Tanya's here. Hello, everyone. Sue is here. Sonia's unsupervised. That can't be good. No, I my day is not going well. <laughs> um, Jim is at a meeting, so Jim will not be joining us. William is here. Hello, William. Do, 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 do. Needs more woo. What woo? What needs more woo? Hey, Don. Have some pie with your whipped cream. Well, that's the Canadian way. Anyways, yes. So it is fall. You have to have lots of cream with your whip with uh, some cream with your whipped pie. Whipped cream. Oh. You need more woo, but it's whipped cream. So Tanya's not having a good day either. Anyways. Hi, Fatima. Whipped cream makes the pie, right? That's the whole point. Um, anyways. So, yes, we will be uh, discussing fall or autumn or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Fatima left me a very lengthy description, so I will have to go and check that as well because I haven't had time to do that since I got home from work. But I'll definitely be checking that out. <clears throat> I have a frog in my throat. Oh, and I didn't start the music. There we go. We spell typos, right? So that's a good thing. That's a start. Uh, I thought I would go over the poll results. Hey, Bree. Uh, and I believe Gillen is watching. She's driving. She's always driving somewhere on Wednesday nights. She probably started having the live stream a different night so that she could join us. But anyways, um, so the poll results. So the poll was uh, travel playlist. What's the ultimate road trip anthem? And the choices were on the road again. Willie Nelson, Life is a Highway, Tom Cochran, Born to be Wild with Steppenwolf, or Sweet Home Alabama from Leonard Skinner. And we have 67% voting for Willie Nelson. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am also in that group. Um, and 33% uh, with Born to be Wild. And we also have two write-in votes of um, Leonard Skinner, Freebird, but only the live version from i believe it's july 2nd 1977 that is the only version apparently hey lance yes i got the free bird rob we all know who wrote it uh and sue wrote in uh roll me away from bob seeger but she likes all of them so there you go hi charity why what do you mean charity says hi why is she not watching what is she doing she should be watching this is good content so yes that's the, the poll results. Anyways, with, uh, oh, my phone's dying. That's perfect. So with most of the campgrounds in the northern portion of North America closing this weekend, it is the official start of autumn for RVers, uh, which brings us to an important question. Is it fall or is it autumn? What thinks you? Oh, Tim's here. Hey, Tim. Thanks for joining us. Oh, Charity stole Don's belt again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. 
yes, Rob can't help it if I got the poll wrong and he fixed it. Very specifically, I might add. So, as you did see in the intro video, uh, it is pumpkin spice season, everything pumpkin spice. If you did miss that, I'll just throw this up just uh, in case you missed it. Wait a second. That's not me. In case you But anyways, I digress. Um, yes, everything is pumpkin spice. We just found this at work. A uh, lot of reflection. Pumpkin spice pancake and waffle mix. And I did see today as I was walking through the store that um, the... Uh, Count Chocula, the Frankenberry, and the Booberry are all out, so we definitely have to pick those up. Because we can't be fall if we don't have those. Oh, Charity's watching on the TV. Oh, you don't want to see me that big. Right, Sue? I'm, I'm assuming you're saying your eyes because the picture was a bit blurry. Minnesota grew the largest pumpkin for a $30,000 prize. Wow. Well, who gets the prize? Is it the farmer? Hopefully it's not the state that gets it. Tanya says it's bottom. Maybe. Maybe. Yes, gotta have the booberry. It didn't, what didn't warn me about what? Is that another uh, uh, PGYT thing? Pre-gourd YouTube. Did I miss something with the booberry? She was she was eating the Halloween Captain Crunch that turned the milk green. So I think booberry is is on a different level. But here are some. No, no Halloween Captain Crunch for me, and none of the other stuff either. I'll buy it for the kids. I'm not eating that. So the farmer wins the thirty thousand twenty one hundred pounds. Don't remember the actual number. That's a lot of seeds. That's a lot of pumpkin spice. Anyways. The ice machine on the fridge works. That's good to know. Bree's not having Thanksgiving. She can't catch the bird. Well, I hope she's not having Thanksgiving with that bird because roast raven sounds disgusting, but... just have to endure endless demands to go get me booberry? Do you have booberry in, in England? Is, is this a savage country? I thought that you were around a lot longer than North America. Anyways, somebody's going to have to remind me to focus again. I'm already losing it. Don is not a pumpkin pie or, or a pumpkin spice fan at all. Really? I... There's too much pumpkin spice stuff for me, but uh, I did see, um, was driving home and drove by a uh, small garage and uh, out, on the, out on the road sign, it said, uh, get your pumpkin spice breaks here. So I thought that was pretty funny. Yes, focus. Canadian is in the house. Hi, hi Daryl. How are you doing? Oh, Jim is not a pumpkin spice fan either. I'm not a pumpkin spice fan either. I make um, some very good keto pumpkin donuts. But uh, if you know anything about the um, the cans of pumpkin that they have, the uh, pumpkin pie filling, uh, it's actually squash. It's not actually pumpkin. Still part of the pumpkin family, but it's not pumpkin. Wow. Don and Jim have something else in common. Their hate of pumpkin spice. Yes, Daryl is Canadian, not Canadian. My bad. I always mispronounce my home country. Anyways, fall fact number one. Amazon Prime had a Speedo bundle? Fatima, how do you know that? I don't want to know. Never mind. Why do you know that? Oh yeah, Tanya's had my donuts. They were good. Oh, yeah, I was going to send you that recipe. Okay, yeah. 
I better write it down because clearly I cannot focus. Sensu recipe. You do need the silicone, uh, the silicone donut things for the air fryer, but they're fantastic. And I'll send you the other one too. The other one's even better. The other one's a lot easier to make and they're light and fluffy and crispy. So no, no focus here at all, right? Is this new? Oh, before we go on with our, with our facts, I got something today and I'm only going to show you the back because I don't want to show you the addresses on the front, but the back. Good. It says do not bend. I got something in the mail from somebody. I'm sure somebody in, out there recognizes it. Let's see if it made it one piece. I'm opening it for the first time. Is that it? There's no cash. There's no check. Okay. That's okay. It's my memory card. It's my memory card. Yes, this is from my camera from M23 that I let somebody borrow and now it's back. So that's good. William, want, uh, Sonia wants to fire me, but she can't. Why not? Went off the rails when Gord said pumpkin donuts. Are you a big pumpkin fan? Okay, Fatima would like the recipe too. Okay. This is, so this is a live stream of me taking people's orders. There we go. Yeah, how did Fatima know that there was a Speedo bundle? Right? Oh, you think I should check this, Tim? Should I plug it in live and see what's on here? Well, if you were that close on you, you should have drove it over. No, I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna plug this in while we're while we're live. Yeah, there may be indecent files. Well, I know for sure that there's at least one indecent file because it's me and Jim singing. So <laughs> that that was pretty indecent. Anyways, Fatima has been checking lightning deals, and Speedo bundles apparently were a lightning deal. That sounds great. Really don't want to see what else they have on there. Or yeah, maybe she's in the market for a Speedo. Make her wheelchair a little more aerodynamic after she's had her coffee. All right, let's focus. So facts about autumn. We should have just met at the border. We probably could have. I'm from where she was. From where she was, if you were, if you were near Rosa's Point, Rosa's Point is an hour and a half without the trailer. So yeah, I probably could have met you. Um, oh, but you were traveling on the day that I was shooting the wedding, which is the whole reason I had to come home. So I wouldn't have been able to meet you. Tanya says it's the best season of the year. I believe that you will find Fatima in that camp as well because she likes the cool weather. Three and a half hours to my house. I didn't think it was that far. Oh, because I have to go through Montreal. Yeah, and it's almost two hours to Montreal. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. We went through there in the summer on our way to Cape Cod because I wanted to go to Ben and Jerry's. And the customs agent asked me why I was crossing the border there with a the trailer. They couldn't understand why I was going through Rosa's Point because it's a really small checkpoint. You can post stuff to Jimothy faster than it can travel inside the US. I'm not sure what that means. I don't know what Jimothy is. Oh, to, okay, yes. Jimothy. Well, Rose's point technically is right at the border between New York State and Vermont. Because as soon as you cross the bridge and you're over Lake Champlain, you're in Vermont. So yes, very close. All right, so, so far we're getting nowhere with our autumn facts. So the autumn equinox is different every year. 
So what we think of as the first day of fall, which is September 21st, which is when we officially celebrate it, um, that is not the actual date. The autumn equinox happens every September. Each year it lands on a different date, normally either September 22nd or 23rd. The equinox is when the sun is directly in line with the Earth's celestial equator, meaning day and night are of equal length. Yeah, so when you get on the other side of the bridge, you're in Vermont. There's that little pullover. We went in there and I did a U-turn with my trailer. When we pulled off into the, uh, there's a, right on the Korean War Memorial Bridge, there is a little pull-off there. Fantastic views. And uh, it was, yeah, okay, yes, thank you, Tanya. I have to focus. Um, but yeah, I just did a little, U, little UA on the lawn with my very tight turning radius and it worked out just fine. Um, the reason why the equinox falls on a different date each year is because the Georgian calendar, the one used by most of the world, counts only 365 days a year rather than the 365.25 days that the Earth actually takes to orbit the sun. Yes, I I could see that, Tim, that, that your brain would be overloaded. This is a very educational program. You'll learn a lot here. You'll learn a lot of useless things that might make your brain explode, but... That's right, Fatima, because I have such a great turning radius. That's coming up in a video because Gilan was was uh, recording me as I did my little U-turn because she thought it was going to be a disaster. So um, because the Gregorian calendar is not quite in perfect symmetry with the Earth's orbit, the autumn equinox will very occasionally fall on September 24th. The last time that that happened was in 1931. The next time it will happen is in 2303. So make sure that you mark that on your calendars. And that's why we have a leap year every four years. That's right, Jerry. Okay. So does everybody feel smarter now? I feel smarter for having to look that up. Anyways. How about if we do this? Um, so because we made everybody a little bit too smart, uh, let's do this to dumb things down again. Okay, we're all dumbed down again. Let's get back to the facts. And go over here to the chat. Oh, Fatima, you're gonna have to send Daryl the link. You've got them all worked up now. He's he's very excited looking for his uh, his Amazon undies. Random fact number two: autumn was once called harvest. The autumn season once had a completely different name. During the 12th and 13th centuries in England, autumn was known as Airfest. In today's spelling, harvest. Harvest is a time when farmers could finally reap the rewards from the crops they sowed. Somebody's warming up their dinner because they came home late. Yes, I'm trying to focus. Oh, Bree's got the baby. Too much work. Um, yes, so they, I mean, uh, the harvest, obviously, they were harvesting all the crops and uh, resulting in an abundance of produce. Harvest was so significant that the harvest festival was born. Pagans would give thanks to the, for the successful yields in the form of singing hymns, dancing, praying, and decorating churches with fruits. This was the earliest form of Thanksgiving as we know it. Um, but yeah, it was originally called harvest. There's more coming on that as well. We've, we've mentally damaged Tim. Sorry, Tim. See, this is what you get. You never know what you're going to get over here. See, so, well, let's go back over here for a second. Daryl, can you do me a favor? If you're on Amazon... I've lost too much weight. All right, random fact three. Well, I guess they're not random facts, they're autumn slash fall facts. Fautum. That just, that doesn't sound right, Tanya. I can't say fautum. You found a juicy Speedo? Why is it juicy? I don't think I want that. And now William's head has exploded as well. All right, next fact. Trees prepare for winter. This just in. One of the most stunning signs of autumn is the turning of the leaves. The shorter days are assigned to the trees to begin to prepare for winter, right? 
During winter, there's not enough light for photosynthesis to occur. So as the days shorten throughout autumn, the trees begin to close down their food production systems and reduce the amount of chlorophyll in their leaves. Chlorophyll is the chemical that makes the leaves turn green. Um, it declines, as it declines, other chemicals become more prominent in the leaves. These are responsible for vibrant ambers, reds, and yellows of autumn. The chemicals responsible are types of flavonoids, carotenoids, and I don't even think I can say this one. Anthocyanins. Uh, Anthocyanins. <sighs> Better? I just said it twice. I know, but I shouldn't say it at all. It sounds, I don't know, just weird. Um, those chemicals that I can't pronounce are some of the same ones that give carrots and egg yolks their color. You learn something new here every day. Tim's paranoid with these facts. Well, Tim, I do apologize. You can feel free to erase them from your mind. And if you need help. And now they should be gone. Yes, William, there will be a test at the end. So pay attention. Focus. Now this one. This one, I don't know that I believe. People born in autumn live longer. Let me finish. A study in the Journal of Aging Research found that babies born during the autumn months are more likely to live to 100 than those born during the rest of the year. Okay, suppose it's possible. But their study found that 30% of U.S. centurions born during 1880 to 1895 were born in the autumn months. That means that 23 to 24% were born during the remaining seasons because there's four seasons. So it's not really a huge difference. And the study was from 1990 to or 1980 to 1995. So it only covered 15 years and that was 30 years ago. So I don't know how accurate that could be. Oh, see, we're giving Dawn a migraine. That's perfect. And Charity says y'all's cold has snuck down here. Yeah. See, you should enjoy the cold. See, in January, you're going to be complaining to us how hot it is down there. And we're not going to listen. It could be 100 and it could be humid. No, Tanya's head is spinning. Or no, that's Sonia's head is spinning. Well, there's still one more fact to go, so. I'm missing a page. Oh well. Fautum is close to the Irish word for fall. Fordham, maybe. Charity says it's been raining all day. It's been raining all week here. If you are born in a depressing season, you can't really get any more depressed. Hence, you live longer. I suppose that could be true, Tim. Anything's possible. It was 70 here today. I, I don't even know what it was here. It was damn cold. But of course, I only know it in Canadian. So let me see here. What did we hit today? We hit 54 today. And I still haven't emptied my tanks. And I still haven't found my electrical problem. So it was pouring rain when I went out to the trailer. Because as I just said, it's been raining here for a week. And when, um, when I got there, where the inverter is in my trailer, I have to deploy the slide. And I didn't want to put the slide out in the rain. So I said, no, we're not doing that. I reached in to try and reset the, the surge protector on the back of the inverter. And I couldn't really see what was going on. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to see it anyways, because it's kind of behind a half wall. I may actually have to pull it out from in there um, to see how to reset it. They say it should just be a simple push, but, uh, it, it, there was no give to the switch at all. So I wasn't able to push it. 
um, but there's also a fuse back there, uh, the small cylindrical fuses. So um, the trailer's coming home soon so that uh, I can wash it and wax it and get it ready for winter and dump the tanks and winterize the, the plumbing. Um, so when that comes home, I will open the slide. I will take the inverter out and have a look at it. Um, yeah, but it, yeah, it's, but it's, there's a fuse right in the inverter itself. So is that what a uh, bus fuse? Is that what it's called? The little, the little silver cylindrical ones. So, um, I think that that's what the problem is because the, Will it be living in the field again? Will what be living in the field again? What did I miss? I don't know what I missed. Um, oh, Charity got news on theirs that parts have been ordered. That's good. And, and it's good for you guys because you can go out for the rest of the year. I can't, I'm done. Um, we were supposed to go out this weekend and it was it was in the, the mid to high 50s and it was pouring rain so there was no sense in going out at all and uh as i said off the top a lot of campsites closed last weekend um and whatever didn't close last weekend is closing this weekend and i have to work this weekend so it's uh it will be done got out yes got out um, but anyways, so that's, that's the update on the electrical. I think I have it narrowed down to that inverter and the inverter powers all of the plugs that aren't working when it's not on shore power. And the, the surge protector that's in the inverter is specifically designed for pass through power, which is what we had. We were plugged into shore, um, and we overloaded the circuit that the inverter feeds. So I'm pretty sure it's that inverter. Worst case scenario, I'm getting a new inverter and I'm gonna boost it up to 2000. So it's a 1000 watt inverter now. We're gonna boost it up to 2000 um, and they're like 300 bucks. So worst case scenario, I'm getting a new inverter. All right, last fact about fall. Uh, we typically think of fall as North American version of the word autumn, but it was in fact in widespread usage in England until relatively recently. Rob. Yes, I'm going out in a boot. That's how you put air in the tires on the side of the road. What? All right. Focus. Uh, originally a shortening of the phrase fall of the leaf, the phrase was common in England in the 17th century. The word autumn is derived from Latin autumnus and has within it connotations of the passing of the year. After the Greek era, the word continued to be used as the old French word autumn. The word autumn entered English from the French and didn't become common usage until the 18th century. So you can thank the French. Yes, oot and boot. There's a moose loose about this hoose. Yes, using the inverter to power the outside outlet on the camper. Wait, how do you change a tire with that? Oh, you put air in the side. Yes, okay. Mine's 12 volt. I plug it into my little Blue Yeti. When I say out in a boat, I'm starting to sound like the Swedish chef. That's even worse. That's even worse. Anyways. Do you all feel smarter? Do you feel like you learned something today about fall slash autumn? I think that was... Also had another sheet that got jammed in the printer that I don't even see here anymore, which I can't see with this light directly in my eyes anyways. So yeah, that's it. Good night. So that's it for focusing for today. So thanks for that. Um, one thing that I did want to add, if I can get back over here. So the 
the poll, which was about what about what your favorite song is. Uh, had a few votes on it, but uh, the biggest where is that? The biggest re response that we got from the week uh, do, 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 do. You know, press that, press this. was from this. This was the most response of the week. Now if I get back on there, this had 11 comments. So uh, people feel very strongly about their mustard and their ketchup. Let's put it that way. The Swedenian chef? Possibly. Tell them about the picture you sent me last night. Tell them about the picture I sent you last night. Why don't Why don't you tell them about that picture? No, don't you want to save that as a surprise? And my phone's about to die anyways. I don't even know. Can I replay a photo? No, see, it won't even let me replay the photo. You'd have to send it to me again. William didn't get the poll. The poll shows up, William, every Monday on my community page. Uh, I can send it to you if you like. I just don't know that I'm going to remember every week. I can barely remember how we started this live stream, so... Tim's brain only has so many brain cells left, and he just lost a few old information for the new one. Well, that's good. It's always good to get new information. Rob would send me a picture, but I would call the authorities. That That is possible. Sue likes ketchup, but she also likes mustard and relish and onions on hot dogs. I don't like relish. Relish is sweet pickles, and I don't like sweet pickles. Yes, thank you, Tanya. It's on the community tab on the YouTube channel. Yes, and Tanya likes mustard. Tanya, I made, uh, I gave it to Fatima. I made her Canadian mustard, which is uh, a third of a cup of maple syrup mixed with a small container of Dijon mustard. And it's delicious, but I can't have it because it has maple syrup in it. Tim likes mu mustard and pickles on his hot dog. Chipotle uh, relish. We have, um, it's a hot relish and it's really hard to find here. Um, it's uh, it's really hard to find here. When you do find it, it's ridiculously overpriced, but it's, it's like a, a spicy relish. Um, not one I do like, but not enough to actually go out and, and buy it. William is the problem child. Well, that we knew. Yeah, so we had, uh, at M23, we had a couple of different mustards going. Uh, I had brought a lot of toppings. Mustard stuffed jalapeno, sneak one into the basket of cheese filled ones and enjoy the carnage. Mustard stuffed jalapenos. Wow, that, that almost sounds cruel, Rob. No one likes relish? People like relish. Gillen likes relish on a hot dog or sometimes sauerkraut. It depends. The The sauerkraut that they have here is in wine and it's not great, but um, yes, Tim, you missed the uh, you missed the, the hot dogs because you were having uh, the mustard on the watermelon. That was going on at the same time and that uh, definitely looked interesting. 
zucchini relish. If it's like a homemade relish, Fatima, I like it um, because it's not as sweet. I find the commercial relish is very sweet. Yes, don't they know I'm doing a live stream? Now everybody's home. And I need to grease the door because as it's gotten colder now, it's starting to uh, it's starting to squeak. Homemade by my grandma. Yeah. My mom my mom makes good relish as well. Chili and onions. Now the dog's barking. The dog doesn't know I'm doing a live stream. Sue tried mustard on well, you got to record that that's good content so you should get bob to record that and put it up on the channel trying the mustard on the watermelon i thought about it but i i haven't uh, i haven't tried it yet now we're moving cars and we have some loud cars here with lots of turbo anyways I have no control here. I have no control here. Anyways, on that note, with all the noise, perhaps it's time to... Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Charity. They're just not supposed to go together, so... Wow, really? Your mom got a scam call today from someone saying that you're in a horrible car accident and in the hospital complete with crying girl on the phone. We saw something. Um, there was a TED talk where they've shown how you can, they can get with just three words. They get your voice saying three words and they can create your entire uh, uh, dialect. And uh, they can, they can use that. They can, they can use AI to create an entire voiceover of you. And it sounds exactly like you. And, um, so we talked about this with the kids because this was a scam that was going around for a long time was that, uh, they were in a horrible car accident. They needed money. Um, and so we have, uh, with all the kids, we have, uh, we have a password that if it's them, they know what their password is and we know what their password is. And if it's really them, they have to give us the password. Uh, not fail proof by any means, but, um, you know, it's, it's awful. It's awful that I don't know how people can sleep at night knowing that they're ripping people off like that. But oh, she called Jim and he called at work to make sure that you were there. That's, that's good that he knew that. That's a, a good uh, public service message. Doing this with Robin Williams, really? Wow. But yeah, there's there's all kinds of scammers out there, and I don't know what it is when I sit in this chair. The dog loses his mind. He, he wants to play. But yeah, I don't know uh, how, how do they come up with this stuff. It's crazy. Well, with that, let's move on. To random thoughts. So random thought number one. If you live to be 70 years old, you will spend 10 years of your life on a Monday. So if you don't like Mondays, that's not good. Your daughter isn't allowed in Canada because she's wanted for some sort of crime. According to a scammer, guy on the phone claimed he was a cop and said a lawyer would be calling. I keep getting calls from the U.S. saying that my my uh, uh, my student debt has been relieved and uh, that I need to call this number to work out the details. And the funny thing is, is I didn't take out a loan for school. Um, school doesn't cost you what it costs in the states uh, and we have different programs anyways um, especially where i am in ontario we have the ontario student assistance program and 
um, it's basically it's government uh, and then you pay them back and it's not there's no relief there's no nothing here oh Tim loves Mondays Tim that's not right all relaxed and fresh to conquer the world until Friday I start I go downhill as the week progresses and you can see by Wednesday it's already starting to kick in hence the reason why Sonia had to text me today to tell me that I had scheduled a live stream for 1130 so, yeah. William's mom is sick. Wait, where did that go? William's mom is sick and sick. I'm going to use that with her. Yeah, it's you should, you know, just to make sure that it's the actual person that you're talking to. It's never a bad thing to, you know, it's just, are you going to remember it? Uh, lawyer called. And before he could get two words out of his mouth, my mom told him to go to hell. Nice. Well, it's good that she knows. She's quite proud of herself. Yeah. No more conquering after retired. Yeah. Well, that's true. Not quite there yet. Yeah. That is good for your mom. Okay. Let's move on to random thought number two. I feel like all my thoughts are random this evening, but anyways. Uh, when jogging, do we put on special clothes so people don't think we're running from or to something? It's possible. It's possible. I forget the name of the movie. The name of the movie, or the movie had uh, Justin Bateman and Jeff Goldblum. You can ask Tanya, I'm not a Jeff Goldblum fan. And uh, Jeff Goldblum's character comes in and uh, Justin Bateman is running on a treadmill and he said, why are you running if no one's chasing you? And I thought, yeah, that makes so much sense. Focus. I am focused. I'm doing pretty good. Freedom. Uh, I take it the baby's gone, Brie. Yeah, you see, Don running, help me. I've always said that too. I am not good with vehicles, so if you see my legs sticking out from under a car, call 911 because something bad has happened. Yeah, I don't know why you're running unless somebody's chasing you. If we catch Charity running, something is either chasing her or there's lightning out because Charity's afraid of lightning. We'll wait till everybody gets their ice. We're good. The movie is called The Switch. That's where um, Justin, some woman is pregnant, and Justin Bateman thinks he's the father or he's pretending to be the father to help her out. I can't remember what it is, but anyways, yeah, it was a pretty funny movie. Uh, random thought number three wake up earlier on the weekends. Now you get to sleep in for five days a week instead of two. So if you get up earlier on the weekends, the rest of the week you're sleeping in. I don't think I could get up any earlier than I do. So I would not do that. Agreed. Huh? Agreed. Oh, Gillen agrees. I am not a morning person. Gillen gets up and her brain's going 100 miles an hour. Uh, sometimes I'll get up and check my phone in the morning and she's been texting me at 4 o'clock in the morning. But anyways, my brain doesn't work like that. I'm in complete fog until noon. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. If Don is running, it means Charity is chasing him with his belt. What? Yeah, running is not good for your joints. That's true. That's true. I, you know what? It doesn't matter what you do. Something is always bad for you, or something is always good for you. Tanya says hi. Oh, right, say hi. says hi, everybody. Oh, yeah. Charity oh, yeah. sleeps in on the weekends. Well, when you're retired, Tim, that kind of works, right? Getting up at the same time every day. Um, we have a lot of people here who need to get ready in the morning, and we all seem to need to leave at the same time. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a disaster here in the morning. We could definitely use an extra bathroom. Um, I don't know what is with this dog. 8 a.m. every day. William, I'm at work at 8 a.m. It's uh, in order to get everything done before I leave here in the morning, I am up 
at uh, well, the alarm goes off at five thirty, and I'll snooze it till five forty. But um, yeah, on the weekends, yeah, eight o'clock, easily, if not later, if I can. Um, in fairness, if I know that I don't have to get up the next morning, I will step later at night, so I get the same amount of sleep. Um, and lately, uh, I don't know what's going on with Robert with the, the 7 a.m. premieres, but uh, he's getting me up early on my days off or on my days that I get to sleep in. But anyway, uh, better 7 than 5.30, that's for sure. But um, if you're in any of his premieres, uh, you'll see me type about two lines because I'm still not awake. I've got about three coffees in me before I can start, uh, before I can start uh, conversing. Sue is not a morning person either. Sleep in every day is a possibility when retired. Yes, that is true, but I don't know that I will. Getting up at the same time every day might be a decent thing. Don's always up 10 minutes before his alarm goes off. See, oh, I, I can't do that. Ten is up at five all week. That's awful. Should sleep in on vacation too, but certain people insisted I be up. Oh, I can't imagine who that was. Although, you know what? There was only one day that I slept in, and that was Friday. Um, I was up when the first night when I uh, boondocked at Walmart. The plan was to be on the road by 7, and I woke up at 5. And I was on the road, I guess I left about 6.15. So that was good because I got an early start. I got across the border early. I got to see the sunrise at, uh, at Lighthouse Beach. Um, Fatima works on autopilot from 5 to 8. Yeah, I work on autopilot from 5 till noon. So yeah, I can relate on that. Seven people, one bathroom. Well, there's two bathrooms. Well, there's two showers. There's three bathrooms, but we definitely need another one. Yes, William, I know you're retired, but eight is late. That is sleeping in. Don and Charity do not speak to each other till eight. Adam, I prefer sunset to sunrise. I am more of a night person myself. Like I have lots of energy now. I can't even focus. Yeah, it must be interesting trying to moderate a 7 a.m. Sunday premiere. Luckily, there's not a lot of people in there, and the people who are in there want to be in there. Um, and I, yeah, I get it because it's nice to see um, Natalie and, and uh, uh, Christopher Olson and, and all those people from the other side of the world, people from the Philippines that don't get to see him uh, on a more consistent basis. So that is pretty cool. Um, yeah, morning drives must be fun with Don and Charity. Hey, we should do a live stream of that. Just just a drive stream of complete silence. Yeah, Bob gets up super early. Bob's up like three or four or something. Fatima was up each morning before dawn at M23. Well, you were certainly quiet, and I don't know how you got up that early without coffee, but. See, if there's something to do, Tim, I'm right with you. Coffee in hand at 5 a.m., I will uh, definitely be there. Because when we're on holidays, uh, when we're on vacation, time is precious and it's very limited. And I want to be doing all the things and seeing all the sights. And uh, so I have no problem getting up early on holidays. If there's nothing to do, if I'm just going kayaking or something, it's going to depend on the weather. But if we actually have plans that we're going somewhere, I have no problem getting up early to do it. Um, you know, we got up at, well, I think we got up at four the morning that we took the ferry to Martha's Vineyard. And, uh, you know, that's what it is, right? Sleep in the truck on the ferry. Um, That's what boondocking is. I've always seen it brought up a few times and always wondered what it meant. It, boondocking just means that you are camping without hookups, without any hookups at all. So I was just, I had my battery. I have a solar panel. Um, you know, I, I used as little power as possible, which is much easier, by the way, when half your plugs don't work. But anyways, um, 
I had a tank of fresh water, so I had water on board. There's a water pump. Uh, no hookups to dump the tanks, but I was just dumping as we went. So, um, yeah, breeze usually up early because, yes, your job requires you to be up with the animals. So, yeah. Fatima saw you off when you left M23. She probably just wanted to make sure that you were actually leaving Michigan, but... Don't misspell boondocking. I don't even think I want to know. There you go. Bree, you're Tim's right wing woman. You guys can go hiking together. There, Charity was snoozing, but she was not the last ones out. Bob's up by 3 a.m. Wow, that is crazy. But I guess if he's in bed by 8, that makes sense, right? It's, what is it now? It's almost 9 o'clock, and I still have stuff to do. And then I will probably watch TV. So I probably will not be in bed for another two and a half, three hours. So you forgot your coffee. We all had lots of coffee. We would have happily given you coffee. I don't think you need to be quiet for charity. I think she could sleep through anything. Especially if it's in the morning. Wait, Rob wants to know who's still in bed after 5.30? Your time or our time? Right, Bria? How did she do that without coffee? I mean, it definitely slowed her wheelchair down. It was probably better for everyone. That's how you roll most of the time without coffee? Couldn't do it. All right. Let's start wrapping this up. We still have some random thoughts to go. How can our body feel and experience the scene when we fall off a cliff in a nightmare if we've never fallen off a cliff before? That's a good point. How can your brain experience something that you've never actually experienced again? When Tim stealth camps, he goes to bed at eight and he can only sleep so much. And that's true. And um, I think that's part of why I got up so early at uh, in Sarnia was because I went to bed at 10 o'clock. Um, and I'm not used to going to bed that early. So yeah, there's only so much sleep by five. I was wide awake. Um, wait, they gave you a cup of coffee and it slowed you down, Fatima? Start with black tea with cardamom or ginger. Okay. All right. And last random thought of the evening. Where does the toe tag go on a dead person if they don't have toes? I'll let you figure that one out. I don't know the answer. I have an idea, but I'm not going to say that on a live stream. Anyways. All right. We barely have time for Would You Rather. So because we are wrapping up at nine o'clock tonight. So get out of here. Your fruity pebbles slid off the stupid picnic table right onto the ground. Why did they slide off the picnic table? What was wrong with your picnic table? Yeah, I'm with Tim. I like tea to calm me down. Also depends on if it's caffeinated or not. This has a little bit of caffeine in it, but not a lot. But a lot of times if I'm having tea late, I can't drink coffee after 6 p.m. anymore. Uh, my younger days are well behind me when I used to be able to do that. Mountain Dew and Three Musketeers gets William going? William, that's horrible. That's going to get your teeth going too. All right. Let's move on to Would You Rather. Would you rather never eat cookies ever again or only ever drink water? Um, it was bowed in the middle, like that badly that a bowl wouldn't even sit on it. No, I can't drink coffee at all. See, and I absolutely love coffee. I could, I used to drink coffee all day long. I would leave my coffee in the truck in the morning when I would get to work. And when I got back at night, it was cold. It was like iced coffee and I would drink the rest of the coffee on the way home. It was fantastic. 
What about the cookies? You would rather never eat cookies or you would choose to eat cookies? To me, I would only ever drink water. I'd be fine with that. I love water. And uh, as much as I like cookies, I don't eat a lot of cookies, especially when I'm on keto. So um, even though there's like a million keto cookies I could make, I don't like most of them. So yeah, Fatima needs water. I had to watch where you put it. God, I'm glad I didn't come over to your place for dinner. That being said, I didn't go anywhere for dinner. I didn't eat very much. Did have some of Charity's pulled pork, but that was really good. Tanya never eats cookies. So it looks like almost everybody would take water. Oh, Tim wants cookies. William wants cookies. Tanya says never eat cookies. Charity mostly drinks water now, so she's okay not to eat cookies. Well, there you go. Don's hate for water is equal to his love for cookies. You don't drink water, Don? I know he drinks beer and occasionally scotch. Duncan is not a choice. No. Water is that stuff that they put in your Duncan when it melts. Sue needs water and wants cookies. Wow. Don does not drink a lot of water. Hmm. Ran, or, uh, would you rather give up brushing your hair or give up brushing your teeth? I could cut my hair short, I guess. Well, see, Tim says that water alone does not taste good, so he adds sugarless flavor to the water. And you can get a lot of that, that uh, meal, or even like, uh, you can even get the um, Country Time Lemonade. We've added that every now and again. Yeah, I'm like Sonia, I drink water all day at work. Bree says, screw brushing her hair. Sue can run her fingers through her hair. Don doesn't have any hair. Jim has magnificent hair, but he's not here. I would really be interested to see what he said. William has no hair at all. That's true. So, I guess that answers that. Would you feel worse if no one showed up at your wedding or at your funeral? Fatima covers her hair. Wait, you cover your hair or your teeth? I assume that's your hair. Charity will find a brush for both. You could technically brush your hair with a toothbrush. I don't think you could brush your teeth with a hairbrush, though, unless you have a big mouth. I don't think you could do it, Charity. Okay. So Tanya would be more upset if nobody would show up at her funeral. Let's host one of each and see who attends. Well, I guess, you know, for some people, uh, your wedding is your funeral. Wait, Tim. Tim says he's dead already. What's the point of feeling emotionally? Well, there you go. Good point by Sue. Your wedding, you don't know who will show up at your funeral and you won't care. That's right. William says the same thing. Charity says the same thing. And you'll be dead. <laughs> at this rate, Sonia will be 90 by the time she has a wedding. So there's that. Maybe... You could host one right after the other. Fatima wants a funeral like Mozart, only followed by a dog. Only a dog attended Mozart's funeral. Don't I'd rather have his funeral. Gotta go have a talk with Jim about this, right? Right? Got to put a ring on it. Well, this is the story of my life. Would you rather work more hours per day but fewer days? Or fewer hours per day but more days? Or would you rather be like me and work more hours for more days? Because that's what I've come back to now. 
Anya spying on her funeral because she needs to know who to haunt. Sonia has a list. That doesn't sound like good news for Rob. Just saying. At 10 hours, four days a week. I'm with you on that. I figure if I got to get dressed and go to work, uh, I might as well just stay, stay there. How does what go again, Tim? A boot? Wait, you're confused? You're confused by the question? Would you rather work more hours per day but fewer days or work fewer hours per day, but more days? Or would you rather be retired like Tim? CGB works four tens. There you go. Sue doesn't care. She's retired. All right. And last one, and then I'm wrapping this up. Would you rather always have wet socks or a small rock in your shoe? I'm definitely going for a rock. I hate when my feet are wet. I'm not doing that. I will pick the small rock every time. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Tim. I got to find a way to get out of that. We're close. We're close. Yeah, Don would rather be retired. He works 12-12s anyways. Yeah. And William wants to know what's work. Yeah, they are both bad. And I came back to a mess because I lost a lot of my staff. And um, so, yeah, I'm pretty much working seven days a week now. So that's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you. I would. I will deal with the rock. Yeah, wet feet are not good. And with that, I thank you all for your input. Uh, I assume Sonia is painting tomorrow night. Um, Friday, I will not be around. Gilan and I uh, have a job to do, so I will not be around on Friday night. Uh, I will do my best to see you all on Saturday. Um, Sue and Bob will be on Saturday morning. And Sonia, I assume, is releasing a video on Saturday at 10. Uh, Sonia, you can save your news for your live stream tomorrow night and your picture because I can't get your picture on the phone anyways. As soon as I played it, it disappeared. So thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope you learned something. I hope you all feel more smarter. And we will be back next week at the same time, assuming that I program it correctly and not for 1130 in the morning. But anyways, there you go. You're welcome, Tim. And for those of you who don't feel more smarter, you know, you can just always revert to this and you should be good, at least until next week. Thanks, everybody. Good night.